Hey, what's up guys? So I'm here at the Whistler booth at SEMA and I want to talk about uh, some of their new radar detectors. I want to talk about both the uh, CR95 and CR97 as well as a new radar detector that Whistler is going to be coming out with in just a couple months. Uh, it's this guy right here. It's the MFU4400 and what's special about this radar detector is it has a dash camera built into it as well. So it's an integrated radar detector and dash camera. This is pretty cool. So I definitely want to uh, spend some time focusing on this. Uh, now starting off, we've got the uh, CR95 and uh, 97, which just came out recently. They're essentially uh, upgrades to the CR88 and CR93. Increased sensitivity on both K-band and on KA-band. Uh, and this is them. You can buy them online now. They're now available. The uh, CR97 is the one that adds GPS for your uh, uh, low speed muting, your red light camera alerts, etc. And uh, there's a USB port here on the side so you can uh, download updates from your computer and update the detector accordingly. Now online, um, they're advertising that the detector is able to uh, detect the MRCD. So I had a chance to actually uh, talk to Mike B a little bit about it and just learn a little bit more about how it works. And uh, yeah, this has a couple different filtering options like some of the other detectors where you can choose if you want it to uh, alert to various sources such as MRCD. Uh, now this one has the ability to alert to it and it's the uh, FDSR feature. Uh, if you enable it, you can have the detector let you know if it's encountering some sort of frequency modulated signal such as uh, MRCD or uh, block blind spot falses. Uh, it doesn't have the ability to differentiate completely, which is totally normal. Every other manufacturer that has some sort of MRCD detection is really tough to tell the difference between uh, MRCD and BSMs, and so you are going to get some MRCD falses, and so with this one, it can alert to any sort of frequency modulated radar like MRCD or others, and that's the way that it works here. Uh, now moving on, I want to talk about the uh, MFU4400. This is pretty interesting. So as I mentioned, uh, this is a radar detector. You can take a look at it here. And then if we flip around to the back of it, you can see we've got a lens right there for the dash cam. It's a uh, 1080p dash cam and uh, it's in one integrated unit. Now, as far as the radar detector itself, it's uh, not actually based on the uh, CR95 or the CR97. It's gonna be, in terms of the radar detector, it's closest to uh, the Z31R+. Uh, it's a radar detector I don't really talk about much. And I honestly don't know too much about it. I can tell you it is lower performing than the CR95 and 97. And the reason that they're doing that is they're wanting to definitely achieve uh, the certain price point. Uh, this detector slash dash cam, when it comes out, it's gonna retail for around 199 to 229, around that price point or so. Uh, and it's gonna be coming out in January. That's the expected release date for it. And to achieve that price point, they wanted to stick with a less expensive detector to add the dash cam, which I think it's another maybe 30-ish bucks or so, depending on where the price ultimately comes out, uh, over the Z31R+. Plus. And so uh, that's why it's based on that unit. However, um, it's also got the GPS functionality, so you're going to have your low-speed muting, your red light camera alerts, uh, speed camera alerts, all that kind of stuff as well. Now, if you take a look at the dash cam, uh, the dash cam is going to be right here on the, uh, the back of the camera, which makes total sense. And I like the fact that, uh, well, they've actually integrated it into the dash cam itself. It's not an add-on that sticks onto the side, so they're actually doing it here. Uh, on the side of the dash cam, there's a slot for a, uh, a micro SD memory card. It ships with an 8 gig card and you can upgrade to uh, up to 32 gigs. Now to uh, interface with the dash cam, there's two different ways of doing it. On top of the radar detector right here, we've got a couple different buttons, right? So if you take a look at the buttons, there's things for like, uh, you know, going into the menu or adjusting city mode, highway mode, that kind of stuff. However, these buttons can also adjust some of the uh, key features that you're going to need when you're operating it as a dash cam. And to explain those, uh, here's Mike B actually explaining what these buttons do here on top of the radar detector. The four buttons on the top, and there are four icons. Uh, the upper one here is record, the microphone, this is the SD card, also the manual lock file, uh, and then the upper one here will be Wi-Fi. So if I want a Wi-Fi, press and hold for three seconds. Wi-Fi indicator on gotcha. one here. If I want to record while it's on Wi-Fi and stream it live to my phone. Turn the microphone on and off. Same thing here. You know, the lower button here correlates to the lower button here. The lower button, the lower icon here correlates to the lower button here. So it's easy when you see it up on the dashboard that you know which button you're supposed to hit uh, for, for the features. Okay. Um, if I press and hold this for three seconds right now, it'll manually lock a file. You'll see that the record button, the record light will start blinking, just indicating that it's storing the file. For instance. So that's our manual recording to Well, that's, that's manual saving the folder. Manual save, right. Yeah. There's also a three axis G sensor in here. So if you get into a collision, it will automatically save that folder as well. Perfect. So normally, if, again, if you're driving around, the record's on, you get into an accident, you know, the record indicator will stop blinking saying that I'm saving that folder. Perfect. At the end of the, whatever the uh, loop time is, whether it's one minute, three minutes, five minutes, whatever it's selected, 
you know, that'll stop blinking, just letting you know that it's now moved on to another folder. That makes sense. So that's how you adjust some of the uh, the basic kind of key functionality that you'll be using regularly. Things like uh, how to stop and stop, or how to start and stop recording, or how to maybe manually mark a clip and save that. Now, if you want to adjust some of the other options that are available in the dash cam, there is a uh, Wi-Fi built in, and so you can pair it with your phone and uh, you know configure all the different options that you won't need to use as regularly. You just go into the app and change the settings accordingly. Now, it was interesting, we were talking about uh, Wi-Fi integration and just kind of some of the other things they could do. Uh, at launch, it's not going to be able to go in and uh, adjust any of the settings for the radar detector, but they're talking about uh, adding the ability to adjust the settings for the radar detector over Wi-Fi via the app as well, which is really cool. Uh, we were also kind of talking about, they've been having meetings, like brainstorming all sorts of ideas of how when you integrate a radar detector in a dash cam, you could do all sorts of cool things. Like what if they wanted to overlay radar information onto the dash cam footage as far as letting you know the band of the radar alert or the frequency of the signal or the signal strength. Like there's so many cool things they could do and they actually want to start doing some really cool creative stuff. If you take a look at what they're doing with their scanners, uh, there's actually scanner forums where if you guys, you know, users have suggestions, they have a uh, dedicated email address set up to where uh, people, customers, consumers can actually be like, hey, I've got ideas or bugs that I'd like to see fixed, and you can send them directly to Whistler. Then they'll take a look at everything that people are suggesting and seeing what are the things that are really commonly requested, what are the popular changes that people are wanting or bugs that should get addressed. And by listening to their customers, they're able to make changes that are based more directly on what us, you know, what we are looking for. And they're saying they could do the same sort of thing with radar detectors as well. And so once they get that all set up, it's not available yet, but that's also an idea that they're considering. They can make something available for the radar detector slash dash cam to where uh, if we have suggestions on any sort of cool features we'd like to see or bugs that need to be addressed, we'll be able to email them directly and if it's something that's popularly requested, we'll be able to make those changes too, which is something I think is awesome when a customer or a company is like really listening to their customer base and making adjustments accordingly. I think that's an awesome idea from Whistler and so a lot of it also comes down to there's tons of ideas that they have already and only so much time in a day. So what things are they going to be actually implementing? And that's where a lot of our requests come in so that they can have uh, you know, more feedback as far as where they should dedicate their time. You know, Now this detector is also gonna be shipping with Whistler's new mount. It looks like this. It's actually very similar to the sticky cup where if you take a look, uh, the suction cup itself, it's not a normal suction cup. It's actually kind of this uh, really sticky material. Um, and then it's gonna be a, a longer base like this. Now what's cool about it is it's compatible with all of Whistler's radar detectors. So any detector they've made since 1994 will be compatible with this new mount. And then you just press the button to release it and then it slides back on like this. Now, uh, they've actually designed the uh, mount to ensure that it's compatible with a lot of cars. Like for example, uh, Mike was saying they intentionally made sure there's enough articulation. So if you've got like a, you know, a vertical windshield, it's gonna be able to attach like this. Or if you have a sports car like a Corvette, a really steeply raked windshield it's going to be able to adjust that way as well uh, they've also made sure that it sits far enough back to where if it's attached to the windshield here it's not going to hit the windshield itself which is great there's also little things i never thought about but then when he said it it makes total sense most people run their radar detectors mounted in the center of the windshield but what happens if you want it maybe mounted over to the side close to your a pillar your windshield is going to be kind of curved you know and so your detector is going to be sticking like this well they've made it so that you can actually go in and adjust that if your windshield is at an angle you can still keep the radar detector straight uh, if you're in the uk internationally maybe you drive somewhere uh, on the other side it's going to be able to go and bend the other way as well which i think is a really cool idea and um, i guess once they say it it makes total sense you know i always run it in the center but for those of you guys who mount it off to either side this is going to give you another option and perhaps even a better option than the uh, the dual suck uh, suction cup, not sticky cup, dual suction cup mount that we traditionally have for all of our radar detectors. Uh, anyway, yeah, here's a look at the uh, MFU 4400, this new radar detector slash dash cam combo. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool idea. And uh, yeah, again, it'll be launching uh, around January. That's the expected launch date. Uh, when it's available, I'll put a link in the video description to where you can pick it up. And the expected retail price is going to be uh, 199 to 229 about thereabouts. So awesome. There you go. Here's a look at uh, the new stuff coming out from Whistler. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.